The Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. Brought to you by Canadian Tire, Boris Optics, Mercury Marine, and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Ammunition, Browning Firearms, Suffolk Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Yukon Gear, Killer Instinct Crossbows, and Outfitter Financial. Okay, so this is my main bait site. Since the return of Ontario's spring black bear season, hunting bears has become one of my favorite things to do. This stuff smells like a slushy or something delicious at a carnival. Mm. Setting up bait stations and trail cameras to monitor the action is a big part of the excitement. <laughs> this is gonna be good. Guarantee we get a bear here in the next day or two. I also simplified my baiting methods this year and added a variety of sweet berry flavored attractants from Analogix. Hey, I'm pretty excited. I've got some new minerals, attractants, um, and protein blocks, and feeds that uh, I'm gonna be using in the next uh, few seasons. The company's called Analogix, and uh, it's available at Canadian Tire and, and hunting shops all over North America. But uh, what I'm really excited about is the, um, the wild berry flavored stuff. This protein block here is wild berry. That crush um, it, attractant is wild berry. And this liquid right here is wild berry. And I'm gonna be using that on my bear baits. So um, I'm gonna set this stuff up, put some trail cameras out, and hopefully get you some amazing bear action. And this will be a real efficient and cost-effective way to, um, to bait bears. You could just go to your Canadian Tire store, pick up a wild berry block or a wild berry jug of this uh, liquid wood and add it to your bear bait station um, and lure them in. Also we've got um, the Black Ops. This is a, a sweet molasses mineral uh, enhanced attractant and the mineral dirt 180. Um, this is going to be for whitetails. I'm going to put this out. I usually do that uh, in April when I'm baiting bears. Pour it on the stump. From March to October you put this mineral out and for um, antler growth, uh, milk production, it really helps the whitetails. So there's more product than this obviously, but uh, like I said, I'm really excited to be using Analogix and hopefully the trail cam pictures I get you over the next um, six, 10 months will uh, prove that this stuff works. What does the OFH do? Since 1928, the OFAH has been the voice of anglers and hunters in Ontario. Its members raise funds and work in communities to support the traditions of fishing, hunting, and trapping. Let's take a look at how the OFAH is making a difference. Hi, I'm August Miller. I'm interviewing Tim Watts from the OFAH, and he's the NASP coordinator for Ontario. So what does NASP stand for? So NASP actually stands for the National Archery in the Schools Program. So what grade can kids start to participate? So the NAS program is designed for students from grade four to grade 12. All those schools that want to have archery for younger grades are welcome to do so, but the NAS program is, is designed for grade four to 12. So are bows safe to shoot at school? So actually archery is one of the safest sports that's out there simply because of the structure and the training that we provide the school teachers so the teachers can safely uh, train the kids during gym class. To date, uh, over 18 million kids worldwide have shot a bow in their gym class with the NAS program and there has not been one single recorded accident. So how can kids find out more information about NAS? So if schools want to bring NAS to their phys ed class. It's very simple. Just go on the OFAH website. Uh, the NASP information is there. Uh, quite simply, OFAH.org forward slash NASP. And there it'll have my contact information and I'll answer you within the same day you email me. It's never been more important for youth to get involved and support Ontario's fish and wildlife. Carrying on the tradition of fishing, hunting, and trapping through conservation. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you by Yamaha ATVs. 
Luckily, I have a small parcel of land close to home where I can set up a bait and keep it topped up a couple times a week. And over the last few years, have been able to take some great bears from it. How beautiful is that? My daughter August has also taken a liking to bear hunting and often joins me to experience the hunt firsthand. Okay, so this year uh, we're using the new crossbows uh, from Killer Instinct. And uh, this model here is the one that August has been shooting. It's um, the Fierce 405, so it shoots 405 feet per second, which is pretty crazy fast for a crossbow. And we've got Burris Oracle um, X, it's the crossbow scope, right? Yes. And this scope has a built-in rangefinder, so she just has to push this button, tells her how far the target is, lights up a dot where to aim, and she's good to go. Now, obviously she's a, a slight person, you know, you're not big and bulky and strong, <laughs> so standing up and shooting a crossbow isn't, uh, isn't really an option. I mean, <laughs> you could probably do it if you had to in a, in a quick yes. situation, but when you're in a ground blind and you're waiting for a bear, uh, we use this, uh, it's called a death grip, but there's different style grips. You put them on a tripod, and then you just simply put the crossbow in it, lock it down, and now it sits there. We point that at the bait, and when the bear comes in, she's gonna be ready to go, and she can shoulder up to that crossbow and be ready to shoot. Yeah. There's not gonna be any shake, no fatigue, uh, you know. Some people think that this sort of takes the challenge out of hunting, but you know what? The challenge of hunting is actually getting in front of that game animal, and you want to make sure that you make an effective shot. So if you take all of the factors that... Um, Come together? That Well, that can make a bad shot happen, right? Yeah. Your crossbow's stable, your shot's going to be stable, you've got your scope, and you're ready to shoot. Fatigue's not going to be an issue. Shakiness isn't going to be an issue. You're going to look to be locked on and ready, especially for a new hunter who's uh, hopefully going to get a crack at a bear. Yeah. We had a late thaw this spring and the bear action started off pretty slow. A few visits here and there, but nothing consistent. But as April went on and things warmed up, a few days before the season opened, we had ourselves a regular. With August primed and ready to take a crack at her bear, we set up late afternoon on the spot. I was looking up there and a blackbird landed on a branch and I thought it was a bear. Because it was so big in the lens. This is a bait I set up in April, first week of April. And it's now the third week of May. And it's been getting lots of action from just one bear. And he, but he comes at literally last legal light. Seven minutes before it ends. Not even sometimes. So right around nine o'clock. So it's six, just after six. He's been here for like four or five nights in a row, right at nine. And we have till 9.07 to shoot. So let's hope at 8.45 we shoot and we can get a bit of footage for you before it gets too dark. Although this bear was coming in literally at the end of legal light, luckily, the days were getting longer. Is your heart gonna pump out of your chest if a bear comes? <laughs> All right, well, we're ready to go. Crossbow's loaded. Um, bring on the bear. What do you see? He's just hit by a tree. A bear? No, a rustle. Oh, he's coming into the bait. Yeah. I see him, it's a little tiny one. Yeah, it's a little baby. He's scoping out the joint. Come on, let's get us a bear here. You watching that back horizon good? Look at this guy. He knows we're here somehow. Remember, if you see them scattering away, there's something else coming. So you think the bear, it might take him 45 minutes to get here, but you might also be the, yeah, it might also be the opposite, where he goes by and he doesn't have to come 
far, so he just lays there until it's almost dark, and then he comes and eats. So it's a, it's sort of a 50-50. But this bear is so regular at, at 9 o'clock, I'm thinking he's close by. With just birds and raccoons visiting, we started to think that maybe this might not happen. It's been all raccoons and nothing, nothing else. Maybe it was the wind, or perhaps the bear scented us. Whatever the reason, we packed up and snuck out, hoping the next day might be better. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you by Minn Kota and Humminbird. Okay, tonight I wore my lucky socks, so I'm gonna get a bear. Gotta look at these nice lucky socks. That's gonna get you a bear? Yes, yes, yes. All right, go get on your bike. With a slight change in the wind and rain in the forecast, we geared up early and headed into the woods on the Yamahas, hoping the bear would be on the move. Only having a weekend to try and take a bear certainly added to the pressure of this hunt. That wasn't a bad drive. Do any jumps? But all through it, August was cool and collected, almost like she knew something good would happen. All set? Okay, let's go, I'll lead the way. You follow me in. You all set? Now we just gotta wait. Don't fall asleep on me. Birds and raccoons were the only things visiting the bait. But tonight, things seemed a little too quiet. Like maybe we were being watched. 7.40, maybe one more hour, right? No, we just... No. Hey. As the clock ticked closer to 8 p.m., we started to think maybe it wasn't meant to be. All I see are raccoons. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. We were talking about raccoons and I'm pretty sure I heard a stick break. It's a bear, it's a bear. Where? On my window, I see them up on the hill. I can't see over there. A small patch of black caught my eye, and as we suspected, the bear was just a hundred yards or so away on a ridge, looking right into the bait. The bear came in cautiously and went right to the trail cam. This was 9 o'clock Charlie, for sure.
fire is it? 29 yards. Do you remember you want to aim a little bit left and high? It's coming in, are you good? I think so. You got a shot? I think so. The Hunting Edge is brought to you by Browning Ammunition. To get the edge, we used Analogic's Berry Crush Attractants to bring in the bears and got in and out of the woods on the Yamaha's Kodiak 450 ATVs. August took her bear with Killer Instinct's fierce 405 crossbow fitted with Burris's Oracle X rangefinding scope. Yukon gear kept us comfortable in the blind, and of course, a Camillus knife made for easy skinning and field dressing of her bear. Can you get a good look at his shoulder? Aim a little high on it. Are you on his shoulder? Shoot him if you want. You hit him good. You hit him real good. You hit him, baby. Now listen, shh. Shh, listen. Shh, he's growing it. Baby, you did it. You caught a bear. <laughs> listen to that. And, oh my God, August. You got him. You got him. You shot your bear. You did it! Killer Instinct! Fierce 405! I matched his Canadian tire. I aimed up and left because. Whoa! Yeah. I'm hearing a moan. Yeah, I know. Wanna get out? Yeah. Come on, kiddo! Alright, so August did it. We that bear, she saw him run. We heard him crash and he, we heard him moan. And uh let's go. Take your time. Now we're gonna go to the barrel first, where you shot him. Now you notice, yeah, take your mask off. Oh, he was broadside for you? Yeah. It wasn't a big target, was it? No, I thought it was gonna be a lot bigger. Yeah. Is that him right there? No, that's the stump we always talk about. I think that's him. That's a stump. No, that's our bear. Maybe. Yeah, it's black. You see your arrow anywhere? Let's take a peek. He was like here. Look at the fur back here. Is that poo, poo or fur? That's poop. Oh. <laughs> here it is. Okay, save that. Did your arrow pull it out? It's very bloody. Both your both your broad heads deployed. Okay. Don't step in any poo. Oh, I have bloody fingers now. I see him. He's right up the hill. He's right here. You got a stick, you're gonna poke him with the arrow, okay? okay? Look at the fur on him. What a beautiful coat. So you're gonna poke him in the ear, okay? He's down, poke him in the ear. Did he move? Poke him. I think he's dead. <laughs> okay. Oh, what a nice little bear. Look at the head on him. Look at this Go down there with him. And look up at me and grab his head. Pull! What a chunker! He's <laughs> fluffy. <laughs> That's a beautiful coat. Nice bear. Okay, your bear's legal. Cool. Now, you gotta hold him up for everybody. Oh gosh, okay. August made an amazing shot. And I swear, this kid has ice in her veins. What a beautiful bear. Lift hard, he's heavy. Hold him up. <gasps> Tenderloins, burger, and roasts are going to be on the menu this year. Right there, kiddo. Not to mention, a trip to the taxidermist. Oh, give me five. Okay, we'll gut him, get your Camillus, and we're going to drag him on to get the Yamahas and get out of here, okay? Right. Let's go. Closed captioning of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you in part by Ontario Out of Doors Magazine. Angler and Hunter Television has been brought to you by... Canadian Tire, Mercury Marine, and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Firearms and Ammunition, Suffolk's Fishing Line, 
Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Yukon Gear, Killer Instinct Crossbows, and Outfitter Financial. For more information on the products used in this episode of Angler and Hunter Television, visit AHTV.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember, conserve and protect our great outdoors.